Let me show you around the boat works. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Boat Works. And if you're one of our returning subscribers, I want to welcome you back to the shop. This episode, I thought we'd do something a little bit different, and I want to take you on a tour of the Boat Works. I want to talk about some of the ideas I had when I first started dreaming about and conceiving of building the Boat Works, some of the ideas and principles that I used in organizing my shop. I want to talk about some of the things that I think might make my boat shop a little bit different than some of the carpentry or woodworking shops that you often see on YouTube. This is just my idea of what I like in a boat shop. It's based off of years of having multiple smaller workshops in garages and closets and a variety of situations. This is my dream shop. The Boat Works is approximately 30 feet by 40 feet. It's just over 1,000 square feet. The side walls of the Boat Works are 16 foot. That means that the side goes up 16 feet, but in the center, it's actually closer to almost 20 feet. The ceiling uses scissor trusses, and that's what gives us the extra height. There's no attic inside the boat works. The walls are lined with barn liner. The floor is concrete with epoxy coating. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out the three videos that I made about the boat works. I talk about how it was built and what it cost and some of the lessons that I learned when I was having it built. Pretty much everything I have that I use for restoring this boat is inside the boat works. Now it's not all the storage for all of the raw materials and all of the bits and bobs and things that go back on the boat. Some of those are scattered in another shed that I have. There's just too much stuff. But generally everything in here is, is the boat and things that I'm working on to put the boat back together. When I first conceived of the boat works, I had about a half a dozen design considerations that I wanted to try and implement into my workshop. The first one was that I wanted there to be lots of light. That's why we have 160,000 lumens of light inside the boat works. There are four rows of four sets of 10,000 lumen LED lights overhead. The second design principle was I wanted everything in the shop other than the boat to be on rollers, to be on casters. Because there's a lot of different types of projects that I'm doing inside the boat works, some big, some small, some requiring different tools, metalworking tools, woodworking tools, composite plastic working tools. I need to be able to configure the shop kind of on a moment's notice to accommodate whatever project that I'm in, working on. The other reason is that when everything is on rollers, it makes it very easy to clean all the nooks and crannies of the shop, to keep the dust under control and keep the floor really, really clean. So all of the cabinets that you see inside the shop here, whether it's a table or a shelf or a tool cabinet, they're all on casters and they can all be rolled around and moved in and out of the shop as needed. Now some of the table tools, well they're on wheels, but they also have locking mechanisms so that I can lock them down while I'm using the tool once I get it positioned the way I need it. What I really like about having everything on casters is that if I'm doing a really big job, something that's really, really messy, I can actually take the tools outside and the work tables and work outside of the shop and therefore not dirty it up. The third design principle for the boat works was I wanted it to be clean. I wanted it to have the appearance of a super clean, I don't know, like a German factory. You know, where they build luxury sports cars or they assemble exotic firearms. I wanted the floor to be immaculate. I wanted there to be a lot of white, a lot of light, and clean surfaces everywhere you looked. Now this proved to be one of the biggest challenges because it meant that whenever something got put into the shop, it's gotta be painted. There's no bare wood. It's gotta be clean metal. There should be no rust. Everything should look really, really good. And the secret to making the boat works look good is lots of paint. You just touch everything up and you keep it looking good. The fourth design principle for my workshop was 
I wanted to have all of my tools in bins or on open shelves, not hidden away in drawers or put away inside cabinets. Now this is kind of an unconventional idea, but it's something that I really came to think about over the years as I had a variety of different workshops. I hate having things inside a drawer. I like to be able to pull open a bin and see what's going on. A fifth design element from my boat shop was I wanted there to be multiple work surfaces so that I could have multiple projects going on at the same time. I might have some type of fiberglass project going on over here, a metal polishing project going on over here, a construction or assembly project going over here, and even more painting or sanding going on in a different corner of the workshop. By having multiple flat surfaces that I could work on, I could start a project in one spot, continue another project in another location, and never have to worry about them getting stacked on top of each other. The sixth design principle I use in my workshop is label everything. Every single thing that I have or a bin or a box or a container that holds something is labeled in some way. I like to be able to look across the room to a cabinet and have an idea of what it is that's inside the container that is sitting on a shelf. How many times have you had a workshop and you acquire a lot of tools over the years and maybe you keep all of your fiberglassing stuff over here, you keep your woodworking stuff over here, maybe you keep your metal polishing someplace else and you put them in bins but if you don't labor them and your bins aren't separate looking or they're not unique, you don't actually remember where did I put inside this bin? Do I have everything I need for metal polishing in one location? It seems kind of silly and perhaps a little bit like you're in kindergarten to label all your stuff and have everything marked. But it also makes it really easy when you have a shop helper visiting in the workshop. It sure does make a difference when you tell them to go over to the metal polishing bin and bring you the polishing compound and a new buffing wheel. They know exactly where to go because there's a bin that's labeled and it tells them. If you like this channel and you've learned something new, do me a favor, hit the like button and click subscribe. That way you'll be sure to get all of my future videos and even some of my special ones when I stream live. Thanks again. Often in a woodworking shop, you'll see the layout of the workshop. Everything's centered around maybe the table saw, or the tools are somehow laid out to kind of support one another throughout the room. Obviously in a boat shop, the boat goes in the middle of the room. I like to have all my tools actually along the periphery, along the walls. This makes it easier to run the dust collection system, to run the electrical, and kind of keeps everything out of the way. The boat is the center of everything, and it's easier to cut something and bring it back to the boat than it is to have the tools cluttering up the work area. Lots of boat channels like to use the post-it note system where you write a project on a post-it note and then move it from you know one category to another category as you complete your projects. But I found over time that really the best solution is the big board. Post-it notes that are stuck on the wall, well they eventually come off. In long-term boat building, you gotta have something more permanent to show your progress on the boat. They say the big board doesn't lie. It is a manifestation of everything you've accomplished and everything yet to do. If I'm honest with you, let me tell you, most of the furniture and things that you see inside the boat works, they're all Craigslist specials. About six months prior to having the workshop built, I started scouring Craigslist and looking for deals on different sorts of cabinets and shelving, all sorts of things that I could put inside the shop, maybe repurpose things that would help me organize my shop and ultimately put the boat back together. I'll give you some examples. These giant red shelving units that you see kind of scattered around the exterior of the boat works these are actually from a real estate and home remodeling office. They were going out of business. The older couple was retiring. And I purchased these shelves at about $30 a piece. They were bare wood. They were originally used to store big albums of wallpaper samples. When they did a remodel, they needed to show the customers all the different wallpapers that were available, and they stuffed the binders inside these cabinets. 
They had them specially made by a carpenter. Of course, they weren't painted, they were bare wood. And one of my rules in the boat works is that none of the furniture should be bare wood. Everything's got to be painted. It just makes for a cleaner surface. The cabinets are about eight and a half feet tall. And one of the reasons that I was able to get such a great deal on them was because no one had a space that they could put them in. They were just too tall for a normal size room or building. I love having multiple work surfaces inside the boat works. I like being able to work on multiple projects and kind of push the cart out of the way and do something else. So I have all sorts of rolly carts that I use as little workbenches. One of the things that I've been working on is trying to get all of my rolling surfaces to be about the same height, about 33 inches off of the ground. Once they're all at the same height, I can connect them together using clamps and create one massive work surface in case I'm working on something, you know, that requires really gigantic proportions. Aside from a variety of rolly carts that I have inside the works, this has to be my favorite. This table is called the assembly table, and it was originally the stand for a military printing press. And I purchased it for $100. It's capable of holding over 2,000 pounds. It's all metal, and it's fantastic surface to build things on. This giant stainless steel shelving unit, this is called the Widowmaker. And the reason I call it the Widowmaker is because when I first purchased it, I tried to get it off of my utility trailer and it toppled over to one side, almost hitting me and taking out my legs. If this thing falls on top of you, it'll kill you. It weighs about 500 pounds. It's all stainless steel and it was originally a plate cabinet for a restaurant. You stack the plates inside of here, along with all of the stainless steel food bins or what have you. The main workbench of any shop, well, that's a special place. And you gotta have a special workbench. This is the pizza table. I was looking for a nice heavy workbench, but I wanted something that had open shelving on it in order to be able to use a bin system. This is actually a pizza table. It came from a pizza restaurant. And they used to make the pizzas on the top, to keep the boxes underneath here to put the slide the pizzas into. Now, a lot of people have a workshop. They like to keep their tools inside their tool cabinets and keep everything tucked away inside drawers or cabinets with doors and things like that. But I found over the years that it just makes it one extra step of hassle to have to open up a drawer, search around for what you want, pull out what you need, and then close the drawer again to go on your way. It's much easier to use a bin system. Take a look. The beauty of the bin system is that you can find whatever you need because you can see all the tools at once. Nothing's hidden away or tucked inside a drawer, like over here. This is a traditional craftsman cabinet. This cabinet was given to me by my father 40 some years ago when I first started in college. And it's awesome. It's very well made. But one of the problems is, is that there's tools tucked up underneath here and it makes it really difficult to find anything, especially items that you might use on a regular basis. That's why I like the bin system. The bin system allows you to find exactly what you need. And it's great for items that you use all the time because you simply pull them out and then throw it back in the bin when you're done. The surface of the pizza table is actually stainless steel, but stainless steel can be a very difficult surface to work on if you're gluing things or you're cutting things. So it makes sense to have a piece of sacrificial wood here that you can use over time. And when it gets too nasty, you just kind of tear it up, get rid of it and start with a fresh piece. This is three quarter inch piece of MDF and it's been working great as the pizza table countertop. The vacuum system in the boat works is something that it took a little while to design and implement. I watched a number of videos on YouTube so that I could get an idea of how to make the system as efficient as possible. I'll do another video down the road where I talk about the vacuum system and my dust collection for the boat works. I think we all know what is the best tool that I have inside Motor City Boat Works and it's got to be my seven foot rolling ladder. Yeah, I love it. This thing is indispensable. 
If it wasn't for this rolling ladder, I'd be climbing up and down an old wooden paint ladder and probably hurting myself every day. I bought this thing on Craigslist from a pickle factory in downtown Detroit. They were getting rid of it. It was sitting in the back parking lot, rusted. I loaded it up in a utility trailer, drug it home, sanded down some of the rust, and then repainted it. And today, it's absolutely my favorite piece of equipment in Motor City Boat Works. What makes the rolling ladder so great is that it has a safety mechanism that allows you to move it around and then lock it down before you climb up it and go on your way. You never have to worry about it rolling away. Now I added a couple things to the to the rolling ladder and that was a couple of these shelves here. It gives me a place now to store the vacuum cleaner and keep it out of the way. Because the vacuum cleaner is the second most used item inside my workshop, it's gotta be in a central location, some place that can be moved around to access everything else. Rather than having the vacuum separate from the rolling ladder, I like to keep everything together. And then by using a really long hose, I can reach wherever I need to in the shop. I wanted to show you this one item. I recently got it in the boat works maybe one or two months ago. And I gotta tell you, it's really made a difference. I have been struggling in the workshop, trying to keep track of my hours and wondering whether I was really doing enough work working on the boat or was I spending all my time making videos and doing a variety of other projects? So I came up with the idea of installing a time clock, just like you would have in a factory or maybe at your real job. And the beauty about the time clock is that it tallies my hours automatically, both daily and then cumulatively over time. And every month I end up with a total of hours so I know exactly how much I'm working on the boat. When I come in in the morning and I'm getting ready to get started, I punch the clock. And when I go out at the end of the day, I punch it again. It gives me my hours for the day. It was kind of an expensive item, but it's really made a difference because now I can tell when I need to step up my game and really put in more time on the boat. Speaking of which, I think you know what this means. It's time to get back to work. I always enjoy showing people around the boat works I want to thank you for stopping by. If you've enjoyed this episode or any of the episodes you see on the channel, do me a favor, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification button because it will tell you when the next episodes are coming out and it will also give you notification of secret live streams that I've got planned coming up in the future. As we approach the summer, you know it's going to be time for travel again and there's always something exciting going on in the boat works or related to my boat restoration. I wanna thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.